What's up everybody? My name is Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking. This is another quick video here. We're going to talk about alignment guides. This has been in the Swift UI framework since day one. I just hardly use them. I don't think most people really need to use them that often, uh, but we're going to take a look at how they work. It's going to help us get a better understanding of Swift UI alignments. So when we're talking about alignments, we're talking about leading, trailing, center, and how those work. And now with alignment guides, we can actually customize some of those alignments. So basically we can make something leading, but we can make it leading offset by 20 pixels or something like that. I'm gonna describe in this video a couple ways how we might want to use this in our apps. I will also explain that we probably should not start with these, but if we run into a situation where we can't use regular padding and spacing, then we can jump into the world of adding custom alignment guides. Before we jump in here, do not forget to hit the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment for this free educational content, and join our Discord if you want to be part of the community. That's all from me. I'm Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking. Let's jump into Xcode and write some code. All right, welcome back, everybody. I am in the Swiffle Thinking Continued Learning playlist here. We just finished the accessibility updates and now we're going to revert back to some other just Swift UI updates that I would say more advanced than beginner level, but not at the advanced level. And so we're going to kick this off here with the alignment guide. This is something that's been in Swift UI since I guess day one, but I haven't really used it. And generally I don't think that we should be using it that much, but I do want to show you guys how it works. The edge case where you may want to actually use it. So let's get this in your toolbox. Let's right click the navigator, create a new file. It'll be a Swift UI view. Let's call this alignment guide bootcamp. Let's click create. Once we're in here, let's get the preview going. I'm going to make my font a little bit bigger. I'll hide the navigator for y'all and let's get this one going. I'm only going to show you guys a quick example because it's not super common. And I don't think that you or I should be spending too much time on these alignment guides. All right, we're going to start this off pretty simple. I'm going to make a V stack here and let's use the alignment by default. The alignment of V stacks is center and inside here, let's put some text that says hello world. And let's put another text that says, this is some other text. Cool. I'm going to make the background of this one. Let's do color dot blue. I'll make the background of this one color dot red and let's make the background of the v stack color dot orange cool all right this is nothing new to you guys but check this out the v stack aligns right there's three alignments center leading we align the items to the left edge and then trailing to the right edge all right but what if i want to align my objects so that so that they are maybe leading but i want one of the objects to be a little bit off from the other ones so there's a couple ways that we could do this in swift ui one way would be to add some padding so we add some padding maybe leading of 10 on the left edge here and that would push this hello world in a little bit we could maybe do negative 10. right but notice when we're changing the padding here we're not actually changing the orange area, the underlying background of the V stack, right? The V stack is still aligned in that same location. And then just this object is now 10 in from that left edge. Alternatively, we could do something like offset or we offset this object X by 10 or 20. Um, but it's the same thing, right? The actual V stack is not changing. Just where this object is in the V stack is changing. For most cases, this is fine. You could imagine a world where we want to move it negative 20, but we still want this object to have that background, right? Like maybe this background is important to our UX and we really want the orange background to remain behind the entire blue text. Well, we could use something called the alignment guide here. I'll add an alignment guide and there's the horizontal or the vertical. And we're going to play around with the leading edge of this guide here. So let's do the dot leading and we're going to compute a new value. 
So let's click enter on this closure and we're going to call this dimensions. And for right now, let's just return zero. All right. So we're looking at this leading edge here and we're going to say how far off this leading edge do we want to push the hello world out? And what we're going to do is push it out just like we were doing with the offset, except let's push it out by 20 pixels. And you'll see here the output of the blue and the red is basically what we had with the offset, except we're actually changing the alignment of the V stack because you can see the, the orange background of the V stack is actually getting extended here. So the V stack now is aligned to the leading edge, except the alignment specific to this view here is going to be 20 pixels from its origin alignment. So we do need to realize here now we have this alignment of leading and this alignment of leading, right? But if the V stack was aligned to the center, let's put this back at zero and align it to the center. Let's now notice that the leading edge of this blue of this blue object, if I, even if I push it off by 20, we're, the V stack is still aligned to the center. So it's actually not doing anything. So you got to play around with this when you're building out your screens. Let's just put this back to leading and we're pushing this out 20 pixels. Now, a couple things here. Why would we ever do this? Firstly, we'll get into some examples in a second, but imagine this hello world. We wanted to push out this blue, the exact width of the hello world. Well, in order to do that, we'd have to wrap it in a geometry reader, get the actual geometry of this text to find out how wide it is, and then use the offset to move it over the width of the object. But if we use this alignment guide, we actually get the dimensions of it immediately. Like maybe it's using a geometry reader under the hood. I don't really know, but we can just call dimensions here dot width. And the width is going to be the width of the hello world. So I can see now immediately I've pushed it over the exact width of this object. And this is cool because I didn't have to use geometry reader and it's going to automatically update to the width of the actual view that it is on, which is really cool. Maybe I want to push it over the exact width, but half. So I can do the width times 0.5. Now I have this updated UI. But the main thing to point out here is that with the alignment guide, we're changing the alignment within the parent V stack uh, and not just moving it over. Again, when we're using the offset, if we offset it, if we offset the X by 20, we're moving it within the V stack, but we're not changing the V stack alignment itself. If we're using the alignment guide, we're moving the actual alignment of the V stack. So let's, so let's run through just one maybe quick example of when this could come in handy. I think the, the primary time would be is if you don't want to use a geometry reader to get the width or the height of this text, you can use the alignment guide to get the dimensions of it and then offset by those dimensions, which is pretty handy. One other time that I've used this is if we'll create a struct here called alignment child view. Every view needs a body and I'm going to make this, I'm going to put this as my preview in here. Let's do a V stack, maybe alignment of leading spacing of 20 and let's create a private funk for the row that we're going to have. Let's just be some random row and every row will have a title of type string. Let's return some view open the brackets in here. Let's add in this, an H stack with maybe spacing of 10 and let's add in an, an icon. Let's do an image with a system name of maybe info dot circle. Let's give this maybe a frame with a width of 30 and a height of 30. And then let's put a text with the title on the screen. I'm just going to add three rows here. Let's just do row. Let's do row one and two and three. All right. On this V stack, let's add some padding, maybe 16. Let's add a background. Let's do maybe color dot white. Let's add a corner radius of uh, let's do 10, maybe a shadow, a uh, radius of 10 and a, some more padding of maybe 40. All right. In this H stack, let's add a spacer just to push it to the width. Cool. This is a cool UI, very basic UI, of course, right? But what we're going to talk about now is imagine this is my UI. 
but I only want to show the I, the little info on row number two. Well, how would I go about that? Uh, well, firstly, I would probably pass in some sort of Boolean, right? Show icon of type bool. And I would say if show icon, and then I will put my icon on the screen. So let's update this show icon to false. And let's make this center one true. This is now this is working. Obviously, if we look at the titles now, background color dot red, um, the titles are not aligned to the leading edge, even though the H stack has that alignment. Only this row has this extra area here. So this could be, so without the alignment guide, one way to handle this would be to basically always draw the icon on the screen, but maybe hide it. So I can call opacity. If show icon, I'll actually show it otherwise zero. And this is a very valid way to do it. But another way without actually drawing these extra icons on the screen might be to actually update the alignment guide. So I could do here alignment guide. So this entire row, which I will make red real quick. Each of these rows, let's add an alignment guide. Uh, let's do the leading edge. Let's do the dimensions. So if show icon is true, maybe we'll align it 40 pixels out, otherwise zero. Cool. Now I'm getting this 40 from the 30 of the icon that will be on the screen, plus the 10 extra spacing that will be in between the image and the text. And you'll see here now, I haven't actually drawn the extra eye icons on the screen, but the text, the titles are actually all aligned. So there's just another way to kind of do that UI. Again, this is a case where there is many ways to do this. We could use padding, we could use offsets, but I just wanted to show you guys how we can use the alignment guide if we need to. I will wrap this up by just adding in a link into the document here to swiftuilab.com backslash alignment guides. Uh, when I was preparing for this quick video, I just Googled SwiftUI alignment guides, and this was one of the first uh, things that came up on Google search. There's a lot that you can do with alignment guides. This article is a great read through. Um, it's got way more examples than I went through in this video. I think personally, my gut is not to spend a ton of time on this. And when you run into some sort of alignment issue, deep dive to try to figure out your problem, but you could spend a lot of time just like learning about these alignment guides and then maybe never actually need them. I have built many apps without ever using alignment guides. Um, but now that I know how to use them, it's like an extra tool in my toolkit. Thank you guys for watching. As always, my name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.